Hey guys, it's Zero here bringing you another episode of Zero Fights Aliens and Xenonauts, episode 9 to be exact. So uh, when we last left our heroes, we were just getting started on a new map. So uh, let's uh, let's not waste any time talking, let's get into the action. Alright, so we already have a Cassian sitting outside of our front door. Well, this is good, I mean, after the last mission, having to go, you know, for freaking ever without ha finding any aliens to actually kill, it's kind of nice to see. Let's see if we can't get them suppressed right off the bat. No such luck. Uh, Lisa's return fire didn't manage to hit, so we're still okay there. Let's pull him back inside the uh, the dropship, just so he doesn't uh, doesn't get killed. We're gonna take a quick step out here as well, just to make sure that we're not getting flanked from both sides. And we seem to be okay for now. So if I can get my heavy machine gunner here, nope, at least not uh, not being able to get him there and fire at any rate. Let's see, how can we deal with this guy? He's in a really awkward position to start with. I could try to run out this way. That's not going to give me the best cover from him though. There's no room to come around this side of the dropship either. Hmm. Alright, well what we're going to have to do I think is just kind of peek our heads out this door, shoot him, and then go from there. Maybe I can get a flashbang on him. Let's see. How close do I have to be? Another couple steps. Yeah, if I go that far out I won't be able to uh, to get back into the ship. Alright, we're gonna keep trying to suppress him with auto fire. Alright, that's got him suppressed. There we go. So now, this guy can't get out far enough to let anybody else use this door, unfortunately. And I don't even know if that's far enough back to protect him from the other alien. Well, at the very least, we can hopefully start getting our other people out here. Hmm. Yeah, let's start uh, trying to move our people outside of the ship. Then maybe next turn we can actually do some damage to them. Get behind that wall. We're going to want to get somebody watching up here just in case he tries to loop around over here. Alright, so that's got the two approaches that he could possibly use covered, other than just coming this way, of course. Not really a safe area that I can set up a... zone of control, so what I'm going to do is going to set him up here, crouching down, hopefully he won't get shot, and then next turn we can hopefully shoot him either from here or just by taking a step forward. We're also going to leave our sniper here, uh, more or less, just to kind of take advantage of the same kind of thing. Alright, let's see if he maybe moves and helps us out here. Oh, no! Alright, well there goes my rocketeer. So much for my contingency plan. Alright, so we're already down a guy. Not a great start to this mission. Alright, where is this little guy? Alright, so he's still over there. Alright, so we got him suppressed. This time we're gonna pull this guy out of the way. If I move here... Ah, shoot, one time unit short. Alright, crouch down there. Let's get the sniper over here. See if we can't take him out. Let's see, how many do I need? Alright, so I can still I can do that. Any chance she can get oh yeah, she can come down here, get a shot off on him, and then duck back as well. Ah, 
All right, excellent. Oops. All right, so unfortunately we lost our uh, Rocketeer. I probably should have moved him, you know, over against this wall, or at the very least kind of got him out more this way to get him out of line of sight there. Line of sight in this game can be kind of tricky to judge. I figured that he wouldn't be able to have any line of sight into our ship, and he would just basically be able to see this entry point of the of the chopper, but eh, it turns out I was wrong. Say Levy. He might still be alive, too. He didn't die. Like, he did, didn't get taken out by very much, so he might still have some... Uh, he might have a pretty good chance to survive the mission, but I don't think I'll get that lucky. All right, so we have an open door over here. So we either have a civilian that's run in there, out of panic, or an alien waiting for us. We're gonna keep moving ourselves forward here. I think probably our best route to take is going to be... Let me see. On this map, there's a factory here, which usually has at least one alien inside of it. And then either the UFO is in a patch up here, or a patch down here. So really, you either want to come down this way, through this kind of storage area here, across this road, and into this patch, and either take out the UFO while you're there, and then, or if it's not there, then you move up through the factory, and then take out the UFO up here. Or you kind of want to do it from the other direction. You want to come up this way, and go through the UFO, or go through a little hole that's up here, Hit the UFO if it's on this side. If it's not, go through the factory. Carry on. This is our map edge here. So I think it would probably be better if we went down first. Down through this little field here. It gives us more things that we can use as cover. It's a little bit more open than maybe going up this way would. But at the parts where you do have to expose yourself out here, there's no cover. At least that's my thinking on it anyway. Oops. Uh, you've already shot. Can I get you out of here? Yes. We'll get him out, and hopefully he'll be able to kind of keep a zone of control going out along there. What I also probably should have done on this last uh, last guy that I just fought is put a smoke grenade right right around here. That would have been the, the really smart thing to do. I'm just, I got so used to fighting the siblings from the last mission that I just wasn't even thinking about smoke grenades, to be perfectly honest. So, mistake on my part. We'll see how badly we pay for it after this mission is done. Alright, so still not seeing anything there. Let's start heading down through this area. Alright, so it was a civilian that opened that door. That's good to know. Makes me a little less worried about what's down here, but we could still have something over here waiting for us. And in the spirit of that, we're gonna keep a guy over here. We still want to keep an eye on what's coming from this way too, so let's move him here. Then he can kind of watch up this direction to make sure nothing comes through here or from down here. We'll bring her behind the sign there to kind of help do the same thing. She's a little open where she is, but I think she'll be okay. And now we need to get a zone of control set up for moving down this way. And we'll move her here, because that gives her or that gives him cover from anything that comes from this direction as well as anything that comes from down here. He's a little open as far as the backside is concerned, but that's what the other soldiers will be covering him on. And then our sniper can just move here as well. And he can help watch down here. In the meantime. So, nothing new to report, just kind of continue moving ourselves down here, seeing what we can see. So far nothing, but I see a car here, so that means that the UFO is probably up over here. 
So, which is actually good. I'd much rather sweep the map first and then take out the UFO last, rather than having to either do it early and then sweep the map after the UFO is done, or double back. Let's see. Alright, so I can't see anything over here. So, I mean, there's still areas that they could be, but I think if they were down here, we would have seen them by now. So I'm going to concentrate all my effort on these openings, basically. So we want to move our zone of control to kind of start to project it out here. And this is a pretty good first step in doing that. And then, of course, we want to keep a couple sets of eyes watching behind us. Let's move our sniper up to here. Gives them a nice covered spot with long range. Okay, yeah, now we can be, we can be almost certain that there's nothing down here now. And you can... Oh, shoot, you were the machine gunner. I thought he was an assault for some reason. Now, this is still just a light scout, so we're probably only looking at maybe three to four aliens outside the UFO, and then one to two inside the UFO. So, not too, too much to worry about. We've already taken down one. Alright, so we can move her up a little bit further, I think. Now, one thing a lot of people do, myself included when I first started playing this game, that is absolutely useless and will get your soldiers killed, is to stack them all up on a wall like this and then move down the wall. That is not very good because if something comes around this wall and your soldiers reaction shoot at it, they can only shoot over a crouching soldier that's directly in front of them. So say if I had her here and a soldier here and a soldier here, she could shoot past this guy just fine. But then this guy would become an obstacle, and she could shoot into the back of his head. So you get these this whole line of troops that are basically shooting through one another to try to kill an alien that rounded the corner, most likely hurting themselves, not the alien. And then even after they've done that, the alien probably will get to shoot back. So when you're playing this, if you don't already know, don't gr uh, glump up on these walls. It doesn't do you any good. Leave ourselves a lot of uh, time units to reaction fire as we move. At least on uh, the people that are most likely to reaction fire. The sniper rifle can, uh, the heavy weapons can, but the heavy weapons you probably don't want them to, and the sniper rifles are less likely to do so, so I don't mind using up more of my time units on them, as opposed to, say, using it up on somebody like these guys who have rifles and shotguns, which are pretty good at reaction firing. Sad everybody? Yep. Let's keep moving. Now unfortunately with the Rocketeer dead, it means that we are lacking our contingency plan. Which last uh, episode, or was it last mission anyway, I'm not sure if it was last episode or two episodes ago, I think it was two episodes ago, really helped in taking out a civilian that had gotten, that had made an annoyance of himself. So before we move through this gap, we want to make sure that we have plenty of Support, though we did just get a look down this street and didn't see anything. We still don't want to be moving over to here. This is a very dangerous section right here um, because there's no cover and to get yourself over to the other side, you're probably using up most of your time units. So if you cross all the way over and there's an enemy in here, you're not going to have the time units you need to fight them. And you can't fall back because you've already used up all your time units crossing this street. So this street is something you really want to kind of group up and use your whole team to get through. Or at least you want a uh, large portion of your team to 
make sure the other side is clear before you bring the rest of your team through. Actually, you're kind of where I want. All right. Now see, as I was saying, this here is okay. Because if this guy, this guy doesn't even have the time units to reaction fire, but if he did, he wouldn't have any chance of shooting this person in front of him if an alien happens to wander through here. You know, because you can shoot over something right in front of you. So this, going th uh, too deep on a corner is fine. Just don't go any deeper than that. We'll set our heavy weapons officer up here. And then that way he can establish a zone of control, kind of going along here. Uh, or not, maybe. I thought he'd be able to shoot around that. I guess not. Uh, at the very least, he could take a step out and shoot, so still not a huge deal. Can I get you over here? Yeah. So move you over here. And prepare to move across the road next turn. She can move over here, and she is going to help these people next turn by chucking a smoke grenade over into the road. So that way, if any shots come from this direction, I mean, this is our map edge, so there's nothing going to be coming from over here. But if any shots come at them from this direction as they're trying to cross, it won't, uh, it won't hurt them, hopefully. Alright, so let's put words to action. Smoke grenade up and over. There we go. And let's move our people across. Let's just go straight into the parking lot for now, and then we can decide on what to do from there. Alright, I'm not seeing anybody in here. So we're just going to back off onto the wall for now. The smoke grenade, as I said, should hopefully keep us safe from anything that decides that it wants to try to come down this road to shoot at us. Though it isn't a guarantee. And this is where kind of doing the two people on the walls thing will get a little dangerous. Because if something does come down this road and they decide to shoot at it, he could go over this guy and then into this guy here, depending on if it tries to like come down the sidewalk, say. But there's really no way to complete this map without exposing yourself to some fire on this road. It's just kind of a matter of the best way to do it. And this is one of those maps that I'm still not 100% sure I figured out the proper way to do it. So let's move our machine gunner over here as well. That way, if we do get any surprises coming from this direction, he can help with them. Same with her. Alright, I haven't left anybody behind, have I? My sniper is there, but he can stay there for the time being. All right, looks like we made it, uh, managed to get across the road without too many or without any problems. So let's uh, focus on taking this factory now. All right, so I'm not seeing anything inside so far. So we're going to prepare to breach this factory in traditional SWAT style. I want at least one person with time units left, just in case something decides to come slobbering out. Now, speaking of... Let's see... Okay, we might even just use another smoke grenade to get the rest of our team across here. I mean, I haven't seen anything moving down here, but I'd much rather spend a, spend a smoke grenade than get my guys killed. So, let's move across. We'll get her to chuck another smoke grenade. And then run straight across yourself. And we'll get our sniper over here as well. Ah, okay. We'll move him here. There's nothing that's going to come from this side, and this side he wouldn't have any cover anyway. Crouch down, because that does give you a bit of a bonus to uh, defense when they're shooting at you. Alright, and so far so good. 
So let's get somebody down on this window, see if there's eh, she can see anything through here. Alright, nothing in there. Let's take a look through this window. Nothing through here, though there could still be something either up in these offices or up on this catwalk. So we're not fully out of the woods on that one yet. Let's take a look behind it. Alright, not seeing anything behind it. There is a civilian over here, so I'm guessing we haven't had too much alien activity over here. So let's see if we can get somebody back here to support her. Not directly. How close can you get? Oops. No. I hate trying to maneuver behind buildings. I avoid it where possible, but sometimes you just don't have much of a choice. And right, we'll get them crouched. Then we'll get these two ready to go in through this door. Set our machine gunner up in here, though I don't know how much use she he will actually be. In there, but it seems like as good a place as any to put him. We'll get our sniper moving up towards this window. And we'll bring her up as well to help with the breaching process. This room will need more than two people. Uh, to be certain, you'll need somebody to head up onto the catwalk to make sure that's clear. It's really hard to get line of sight up on here when you first enter the factory, I find. Uh, and it's usually just better to send somebody up to check to be sure. Alright, so with that said, let's take a look inside. First things first, we're going to send somebody up onto the catwalks. So that gives us a nice view of the factory floor. There's the, the UFO. Nothing so far. Alright, the this side of the factory is clear. Let's send somebody in here. So far, so good. Where do these stairs lead? I guess you can get up to that side of the factory from this side too. Interesting. Didn't know that before. Never really had a need to do it. Usually I could just go up through Either these, this set of stairs or this set of stairs, depending on which side of the factory I'm breaching. Alright, so we are okay on the factory. The factory is clear. I guess now we uh, continue on towards the UFO. And the best way to do that, I think, is actually going to be to skirt around the back side of the factory and head up this in this direction. Not a lot of cover, unfortunately. We are up against Cassians, so we do have access to smoke grenades. Going through the factory limits the number of people that we can kind of get out because we really either we either have to use a C4 charge to get through this wall we have to go out this door or out this door so now that I think about it hmm if I actually head through the factory and come out this door I can use the cover in the factory and then go out this door and start using this box and these construction supplies here as cover all right so completely disregard what I just said we are now going to use the factory as our cover as we move through it. You are able to move a little bit, so we'll get you out onto the catwalk. We can at least watch out here, see if maybe we get any UFO or uh, aliens moving around. That shouldn't be. These guys, I think, are going to move around the backside, though. Uh, though, then again, we do have the problem where you can't see through the bloody walls, and I hate that. So, as much as I hate to do it, I think the best way to do this is actually going to be to move everybody through the factory. Or at least the way that's going to cause me to lose... Uh, that's going to cause me the least amount of mental anguish trying to figure out where I can move and where I can't. We'll just move our sniper up to the door. We'll move our machine gunner. Can you go a little further? Yes, good. Move our machine gunner up to the other side. She can start heading out around this way, I think. Actually, for now, she'll just stay in this side of the building.
Okay, so let's continue our march. We want to get somebody here to peek out this window, see if she can see anything, which she can't. So good so far there. We'll keep her there just to reaction fire anything that does make an appearance. Move him up to here so that he can be the first one at the door. And he can follow her, follow him. We'll get him crouched just in case something comes through the door. We still have this guy. We can move down to the other side of the window. Don't want to stand him right in front of the window, makes a nice target of himself. But he can kind of exit out in the same motion. She's actually going to move down and just make a sprint for that blue box. This civilian is still alive, so we're I'm fairly certain we'll be safe back here. Just in case, though. Keep her crouched. Take what little help I can get as far as that's concerned. Our sniper can move up to here. Because... See, I'm kind of worried that I've only seen one alien outside the UFO. There could be another one over here that we haven't seen yet, and I would like to get this side of the street set up for my heavy weapons guys. But in the same breath, I don't know, let's, uh, let's hold off on making any kind of decision like that for now. Uh, and we will kind of cross that bridge when we're actually ready to move our people out of the factory. All right, now I do want to get a look with somebody to see what is on this side of the road. It's a little bit of a hike, but I think she can manage it. All right, so far I'm not seeing anything. We're going to send her up further around this side, so that way when we breach, she'll be the one of the people on this side of the UFO. And maybe she can get a better look at what's down here. Okay, she can't quite go that far. Uh, Alright. Hide in that little corner for now. Not the best use of time units ever, but... Sometimes you just have to, to do it. We'll do a quick run with him, because I'm not seeing any aliens. So I think we're okay to spend a few more time units to get our people into position. Speaking of, she is going to be the other person on this side. So we're going to have two on this side, two on this side, and then we're going to have our C4 person. Who is actually going to move down to this door and prepare to exit this way with our heavy support team as soon as we can be sure that this side is relatively safe. Alright, get everybody positioned around the door. Alright, let's take a look. See if we can see anything down here that would be dangerous. So far nothing, though that's a really bad place for her to be standing, so let's back her up. Alright. Well, let's send a guy out over here, get some eyes on this side of the wall. Yeah, there are no aliens other than the one that we killed when we first got off the ship on this map, other than the ones that are inside the UFO. What is going on? I have never had this few aliens to deal with in a campaign before. Not outside of the very first mission, anyway. All right, well... Let's get our people moved up here. Might as well take advantage of it. Here I am being all cautious because I'm sure that there's going to be at least another alien and I could have just gone straight for the UFO. That's rather irritating. Alright guys, well, I'm, uh, I'm sorry for another one kill mission and then a whole bunch of me walking and describing strategy to keep your soldiers safe on a map with nothing on it. But you can't be sure until you've actually done it, so nothing I can really do. Uh, but join me next time. We will be breaching this UFO, killing these aliens, and 
insulting them and for wasting our precious time. And uh, we'll move on to hopefully bigger and better things. So thank you very much for watching, and so long.